Welcome to this installment of the Consultants Training Institute's Emerging Leaders Series. I am Brian Jones, thrilled to be joined by Mark Negrini. Mark, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Brian. To talk to us about the exciting world of financial investigation and some of the tools and techniques that you've pioneered um, that help our um, analysts and appraisers do their work very well. Um, please tell us a little bit about how you got into this profession and where you're working now and, and uh, your path to, to providing these techniques. I was a PhD student at the University of Cincinnati and we did a number of classes on data analysis and data interrogation and one thing led to another thing. In fact, I discovered Benford's Law and I did a PhD dissertation on income tax evasion okay. and I analyzed uh, an entire uh, data set uh, related to income tax evasion and I've actually just stayed the course and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I've been very lucky in that technology has become better and better as the years have progressed so that we're able to do larger data sets and we're able to do it even more cost eff effectively each year as, mm -hmm. as time goes by. So accountants have tools at their disposal now that 20 years ago they might have existed but it would right. have been ex very expensive and very difficult for them to use. Right. Where are you working now? So at the moment I'm a, a professor at the College of New Jersey, but that will end soon and then I will be a full-time author and consultant and conference presenter and, and, and things workshop that's a, presenter. That's a big move. Recently published um, within the last what, year to two years, yes. um, two brand new books um, published by John Wiley and Sons. Um, talk to us about the first of them, Financial <laughs> Uh, analytics. Forensic analytics. Yes, forensic analytics is is is, is quite a mountain. One hundred and fifty thousand words, um, quite a lot of chapters, and what we do is we talk about those techniques that, that that accountants and auditors can use to find transactions that seem to be erroneous or anomalous or fraudulent, and it's ways to dig into the data and find out exactly what what looks to be odd. Okay. And um, generally, these tests can be run using a, a reasonably priced software, so it's not as if we have to go out and spend a fortune mm -hmm. after buying the book. Okay. So that was forensic analytics, which is, which is a number of tests um, that, that accountants and forensic accountants can use. And Benford's Law is, of course, my favorite topic, and that's one entire book that came out a few months ago uh, just on Benford's Law. Mm -hmm. And Benford's Law actually gives us the, the, the patterns of the digits in lists of numbers and so we start off with the very basic idea that Benford's Law is true. And then as the chapters progress, I, I show applications of cases where data did not follow the patterns of Benford's Law and, and, and what that told me. And in general, it told me that something was wrong, but, mm -hmm. but, but we had to sort of look, think about it before we, we simply saw what was wrong. So talk about some of those unique, give us an example or two of, of how Benford's Law is used in the analysis of uncovering um, financial mishandlings. So, uh, one of the chapters, and this is still a work in progress, was I looked at Madoff's numbers. And of course, because Madoff had a Ponzi scheme and everything was fictitious, he had to make up these numbers. And in general, he wasn't so bad. The numbers that he made up followed Benford's law at least reasonably closely. Uh, they, it, was, it was quite cleverly done, and he probably didn't even know about Benford's law. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at the returns from real funds, people that were authentic, people that really invested other people's money. And what I saw was that the returns, the digit patterns of these daily returns, those followed Benford's law as well. So the research that I'm busy on now is trying to decipher whether we can actually use Benford's law to, to distinguish between Ponzi scheme returns, which are fake, and real returns from real mutual funds, which are real. Mm -hmm. What about um, some additional techniques that forensic accountants and financial analysts can utilize from your perspective of your work that would um, help them uncover this data for their, for their engagements? One of the things I like to look at is, is, is continuous monitoring. And so this would be where we monitor our transactions, maybe not on a daily basis, but at least regularly. And one of the tests that could be used there is something called time series analysis. And what that does is time series analysis would look at your past data and it would project forward and it would say if, if the past continued as it was, this is what the pattern should look like going forward. And with time series, the idea here would be I would compare what time series projected as my results for the coming year compared to my actual results for the coming year. And if there was a big difference, 
all that that would really tell me is that something changed. Okay. Y you changed from your own past patterns. And, and uh, this would be very instructive because if you have a thousand branches, um, two thousand branches, you could run this for each branch and you could see which branches have had numbers that deviate from their own past patterns most significantly. Hmm. For those working in the profession of financial investigation, what would be some advice you would give to them um, in addition to some of the tools and techniques that you've discussed? What advice would you give to them that would um, help them become much more um, credible in, in the work that they take on? I think uh, one of the problems is uh, the, the, the technical word is professional skepticism. And so the idea here is when we are presented with some um, explanation or when we're presented with some documents, still to have some degree of professional skepticism as to I'm not going to believe it absolutely on face value. And uh, from time to time we hear presenters at the conference uh, such as this where they would say they got a marvelous explanation and it sounded all wonderful. Mm -hmm. But with professional skepticism, once you dug a little deeper and thought about it a bit more, mm -hmm you realize that this was a fake explanation or, or that the documents didn't exactly say what, what, what you thought. So dig deeper. Always answer or rather always ask questions and then find out uh, if there's some validity to what's you know, being proposed. Be somewhat skeptical. Yeah, and yeah. of course this is not uh, what, what, what happy people do, but, but of course uh, this is what we're expected to do as part of our, our, our profession. So where are you from? I grew up in Cape Town, South Africa. And Cape Town is the largest southernmost city uh, in Africa. Mm -hmm. And it's been, uh, I came here as a student. Mm -hmm. And so I would probably say that this is home now. Really? I've been here for a long time, yes. Do you, um, you reside in New Jersey? I live in New Jersey, yes. And my closest, uh, most famous city is Princeton. And my closest, largest city is Philadelphia. So I'm sort of straddled in between those That's two. That's a great little stretch of the mid-Atlantic to get into Manhattan, Boston. As far south as D.C., that's a, a, a good little um, area of our country. Do, what do you do when you're not working and writing and researching? My hobby is playing darts. Hmm. So I actually love playing darts. And uh, I, I play during the week, and I read the magazines, and, and um, I, I go to tournaments. Not that often, and I don't do that well, but I really enjoy going to the tournaments. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't have enough tattoos yet, um, or I don't <laughs> actually have any tattoos. Uh, but I still try and fit in and enjoy a nice uh, round had, of darts. I had no idea that there was such a community around darts. Is it just, it's uh, obviously competitions, but what kinds of things are involved in, in in that. So uh, it's rather amazing, but Philadelphia is uh, not, not quite the darts capital of the United States, but darts is um, a, a big deal in mm. Philadelphia, and, and I would say it's maybe the hub okay. of, of, um, of darts, and their competitions, and their reasonably big prizes, and their rankings, and we even have a darts magazine. Um, so darts is much bigger than what you, than what you might think uh, just on the surface. I I, I'm excited to know we do some programs in, in um, Philadelphia. Next time I'm there, I'll look into it a little bit more. I'll tell you where the, where, where, where the uh, meetings are. Great. Mark, thank you so much for contributing the, the books that you're writing, the research you're doing to equip the profession with tools to, to succeed in their practice. And we look forward to collaborating with you more and, and appreciate what you've, what you've contributed. And keep up your excellent work too, Brian. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much.